Hello lovely people, today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I'm Jessica, I lost my hearing as a teenager and I am a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So obviously I was pretty excited when it was announced that Marvel would be bringing in two new deaf superheroes to the MCU from the comics. About as excited as I was upset when they originally made Hawkeye hearing in the films. Because if you didn't know, the comic book character Hawkeye, who's played by Jeremy Renner in the films, actually has a history of being deaf. For a range of reasons uh, that they retcon occasionally and sometimes he wears invisible hearing aids that work perfectly. I mean he has zero hearing loss but you know, roll with it. And Marvel announced that not only would these two new characters be played by actors who are themselves actually deaf, but they would be integrating Hawkeye's hearing loss into his own spin-off show where he would also be seen wearing hearing aids. So, the six part holiday themed series would see Hawkeye forced to face his dark past as Ronan, battling old enemies as he trains a new archer to take his place, all whilst trying to get home to celebrate Christmas with his family. Now the Hawkeye series has all of the elements you'd expect of the Avengers franchise. It's got explosions, adventure, wit, villains, good guys who just put doing the right thing above everything else. But it's also more groundbreaking than you might realise, and not just because of its inclusion of a deaf Native American character, Maya, who's played by deaf and disabled actress Alacra Clox, who is also Echo, a superhero with the ability to perfectly mirror another person's movement, who just happens to be in line for her own spin-off Disney Plus series, which is in the works, but we're going to talk about her awesome self later. So, as we all know, representation is a huge deal. Seeing your reality represented and the perspectives of people you already know and love in the real world on screen is a big deal for yourself and for helping others to understand the life that you live and why you think the things you do. It's important to help stop people feeling isolated and to help us understand other people's points of view. Now aside from niche shows or one-off episodes, the deaf community isn't very well represented and hard of hearing people especially aren't. So let's talk about it. There will be spoilers. For Hawkeye, not for Eternals, the, the other Marvel property <laughs> with a deaf character because Eternals is a film and hilariously there were no subtitle showings at a time that we could get childcare. Um, and as I film this, it's not yet out on Disney Plus, but I think it is out now, so. It's inclusive, but it's not that inclusive. But don't worry, if you're not an Avengers fan or a comic book fan or even a movie fan and you're still watching, Hi, well done. Uh, you don't need to know a lot. So the Hawkeye series follows Clint Barton, otherwise known as Hawkeye, a normal, non-superpowered, non-enhanced human being who just happens to be able to hit any target with any projectile, you know, like humans can, and also fight non-humans in hand-to-hand -hand combat. From the opening scene of the first episode, we see that he is now wearing hearing aids and later learn from a very amusing smash cut of every time that he's been really, really close to a massive explosion in all of the different Avengers films that his years of being an Avenger have caught up to him. He is, after all, the most mortal one. I mean, that's arguably just the kindest way of saying not the best, since he's obviously not the only mortal one. I'm really sorry, Clint. Oh, I like him so much, but it's true. So his ears have taken significant damage and now without his hearing aids he can't hear a thing. It's a big change for the character and a big change for anyone who has dealt with it in their life. Speaking of which, let's think about dealing with changes to your physical health and the effect it can have on you mentally and emotionally by talking about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest online therapy platform and they're who I go to for my therapy because it's professional therapy made accessible, affordable and convenient. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist from their network of over 20,000 licensed therapists. If, like Clint, you are struggling to come to terms with losing your hearing, then BetterHelp may be just what you need. It's professional therapy done securely online. As stubborn as he is, I'd like to think even Clint would try if he needed the help. We don't talk enough about the strain that poor physical health, changes in our abilities or losing capabilities have on our mental health and it's vital that we do because it's easy to lose confidence in yourself when your body isn't doing what you want it to do. And medical trauma is a thing and <laughs> oh boy does it stick with you. I wish I'd been able to talk to a therapist through a platform like BetterHelp when I first became ill and found out I had a disability that would be with me for life. Instead I had to go to in-person therapy therapy that I often had to cancel right before I left the house because 
just getting ready to leave took all of my energy and then I was lying on the stairs, so. If only I'd been able to just lie in bed and talk to someone through a computer screen. There are a range of ways to talk to your therapist and better help, from video calls to phone calls to instant messaging, even journaling. And it, you know, works for healthy people too. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it's professional counselling done securely online and available worldwide. It's more affordable and financial aid is available. Their therapists also speak a range of languages, including American Sign Language. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So go to betterhelp.com slash Jessica, that's better H-E-L-P, all one word, to join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And if you click the link in the description, there's a special offer for my viewers with 10% off your first month. And if you're wondering why I'm angling my head strangely in this video, it's because Christmas happened and I had to wait too long for my next jaw Botox appointment. Now my jaw's falling off and again and it really hurts. Connective tissue issues? <laughs> what fun! So, Clint identifies himself when asked as hard of hearing and thus becomes one of the first hard of hearing characters whose symptoms are explored on TV and the very first hard of hearing superhero. Now at first there was obviously a very mixed reaction from the public about this and how Renner would be able to play the character, but that swiftly changed when he shared in an interview that he himself is hard of hearing. But before we start talking about Hawkeye the series, let's talk about Hawkeye the character and his history with hearing loss. Clint Barton, alias Hawkeye, first appeared as a supervillain in Tales of Suspense number 57 in September 1964 and later joined the Avengers as a superhero in May 1965 in the Avengers number 16. He has since been a very prominent member of several Avengers teams, founding the West Coast Avengers, marrying and then divorcing Bobby Morse, also known as Mockingbird, adopting the Ronin alias after his death and resurrection, and then mentoring Kate Bishop to be his successor as Hawkeye, the latter two being the plot points in the Hawkeye series and, you know, maybe one of the other things I just mentioned. <laughs> Maybe. So Clint's hearing loss began in the 1983's Hawkeye number no. 4, which was the final issue of his first solo miniseries. In the comic, Clint purposefully deafens himself to evade a supervillain's sonic brainwashing device. But don't worry, it's just a plot device, as it's swiftly dealt with a few pages later when he gets swanky stark hearing aids that somehow just override the fact that he now has no eardrop and fully restore his hearing. Um, I mean... He sh literally shoved some arrows in his ears. His hearing loss was then left to be used or ignored as the plot demanded, with some artists including his hearing aid and others just forgetting it, until the Avengers Annual in 2001 used the Onslaught crossover, which uh, was a whole thing, it's fine, to say that the reality warping powers of Franklin Richards, who is the young son of Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, again, you don't need to necessarily know that, had restored Hawkeye's hearing, so wow, amazing, not deaf anymore. However, in 2012, the same year the first Avengers group film was released, Hawkeye's deafness was reintroduced in Matt Fraction's celebrated 22-issue series, which sees Hawkeye lose his hearing during a battle with supervillain, supervillain, should we blame it on the side of my face that doesn't work, supervillain, assassin, the clown, who stabs the Avenger in both ears with his own arrows, and thus living with hearing loss became an ingrained part of Hawkeye's mythos. Now, in that series, Clint's experience with deafness was not only a key plot point, it's also a really significant part of the actual design on the page. Writer Matt Fraction and artist David Aha were famous for experimental storytelling and they included an issue in which as much of the dialogue is from Clint's deafened perspective as possible. It's either in American Sign Language without translation or kind of accurate lip reading. And within that issue, it was also established that hearing loss is actually something Clint has experienced early in life at the hands of of his father, who regularly beat him, and his brother Barney, who uses a wheelchair and often interprets for him. Which explains why Clint has a working knowledge of sign language, and partly explains why he's reluctant to use it. And it's really great that the series delves into the emotional side of losing your hearing, and how difficult it is to not be able to communicate with those around you, as well as how isolating, but even how someone might rub against the things that others would see as being there to help them. He starts to use a combination of sign language, lip reading, and using relying on hearing aids, but they are now real world ones, rather than high tech stark ones, that don't give him perfect hearing, and they can be exhausting to wear. Often he has to guess words in context. 
So the Fraction series also sees him teaming up with Kate Bishop, adopting a one-eyed yellow dog and facing off against a bunch of goons in identical tracksuits, so clearly inspired the makers of Hawkeye the series on Disney+. Plus. The TV series has a different take on where Hawkeye's hearing loss comes from, but maintains that it's an integral trait for the character of Hawkeye and thus the introduction of Clint's hearing loss into the MCU comes as a very welcome development for representation and disability in Marvel. This isn't just about, oh, we're adding some new characters to make up for things we missed in the past. Sex in the City. Also, what the hell is that show? No, this is one of their core characters having hearing loss and still being shown to be badass. I know that word sounds really weird when I say it, but badass sounds weirder. Marvel Studios producer Trin Chan stated in an interview that Clint having a disability, which was the term that was used, not all people with hearing loss consider it a disability, underscores the most important thing about Hawkeye as an Avenger. Despite all the time he spends adventuring with gods, geniuses and super soldiers, he is very much human and vulnerable. Kate and Clint are human beings who have no superpowers. They're just skilled at what they do, Chan told to Polygon. We wanted to really hit at the idea that they can get injured, they can get hurt during these missions that they Go through and to showcase that, to see him being taped up because he's feeling that pain and he's feeling that injury. And the hearing aid is a nod to the idea that through his experience, this can happen. And I think that's one of the most relatable elements of the story that we try to tell here. And amazingly, it is actually relatable. It's funny, sure, because it's a Marvel movie, but the butt of the joke isn't Clint's hearing loss, it's more often Kate for being an overeager, or Clint's really, again face. The moments in which he's vulnerably struggling with communication are either sweet and make us like the characters even more, or else their chances for Kate to be dropped into the take charge, learning on the job role. And then, much like real life, you're when you're losing your hearing, there are these kind of genuinely funny moments of communication as he completely mistakes what other people are saying, and signs back to Maya's ASL with all of the sign language he's learning from his hearing son. More cookie, please. Thank you. But in ASL, because... I'm British. There's no offence, there's no making fun, it's just genuine, oh god, I'm an adult trying to learn a new language, and it's hard, and I am not at the level that this person thinks I'm at yet. We don't generally see honest depictions of people feeling their way into disability on screen. It's mostly just an either-or situation. And we especially don't see them in superhero movies. After all, the characters are supposed to be super strong, powerful, and even if they do have a disability, it's meant to be a magic one. It actually gives them extra powers. Hi, daredevil. I'm blind in one eye. It just means I have no depth perception and I really can't see in the dark. Seeing a character struggle with something that actual people struggle with and still be a hero is important, especially for younger viewers and viewers who have passed the age of 30. <laughs> Also, Clint isn't the only deaf or hard of hearing character in Hawkeye, of course. Maya, who appears at the end of the Disney Plus series second episode, is a superhero with a supernatural quirk in that she can perform any skill she can see demonstrated after a lifetime of growing up deaf in a hearing world and being forced to constantly watch everyone around her in order to pick up what is going on. So the show hired a deaf consultant in order to make sure that they were accurately telling Maya's story, and it does really show. This is one of the first times I'd actually seen two main characters with hearing loss on screen together in a mainstream film, because usually we're one and done. <laughs> For me, the most relatable scene was watching young Maya at school. Young Maya is actually played by older Maya's cousin, and they could be clones. That is some perfect casting, and they should immediately do one of those biopic films that go through many years together. She's this young deaf child in a mainstream school with no deaf friends, only able to understand a few words her teacher saying. She gets her workbook out, gets the page number wrong, but to the amazement of her teacher, she perfectly does the work. And I felt that in my bones. <laughs> as someone who always brought in the wrong homework, or got the question wrong, and did it, did it well, just did the wrong thing. I still, so often, I shock people by completely not following instructions, and I'm like, why are you surprised by this? You know I'm deaf. Why did you say them out loud? Child Maya later asks her father why she can't go to a deaf school, and he explains that the family can't afford it, which is this really lovely piece of disability realism that hopefully we see more of in her own show. And I really liked that they pointed out how expensive hearing aids are to repair and replace, and just disability in general. Her father explains that she will have to learn to jump between two worlds, the hearing and the deaf, just by watching. A really lonely future, and one that Clint as a person who went deaf later in life can understand and empathise with but not fully share. Especially since he wears hearing aids, which Maya disapproves of. But uh, they didn't really resolve that 
plot point? His hearing aids are really kind of much larger than they probably need to be. But I understand that it's a very visual thing. I mean, my hearing's atrocious and my ears are tiny. The part that actually goes in my ear is really, really quite small. All right, I do have some issues with his hearing aids in the show because they work comically well. They're in ear and solid, but they don't squeal. And it did feel sometimes like the show misstepped on his degree of hearing loss because he at one point, when his hearing aids aren't in, rhymes Kate's words back to her when they're in a noisy setting, but at another point he can't hear at all that she's even started speaking, even though they're in a quieter room. Mm. I'm like, ah, oh, am I being nitpicky? Because hearing can be like that. Adrenaline pumping can make your cogs turn faster and you come up with possible things you've heard, whilst listening fatigue means that your brain might just shut off entirely because too much. <laughs> I actually have a video about that. You can click here to watch it. But then he also turns when a bad guy approaches him from behind and just has a bit too much situational awareness for someone who has recently lost a sense. And this might be because although the show had deaf consultants, there weren't any writers who identify as deaf. There are more good moments than there are ones that made me go, hang on. And it was lovely watching his children interact with him. In the first episode, one of Clint's children positions himself on his dad's good side. And it was great to see how easily Kate offered her help without even a second's thought. However hearing loss has occurred, life for a person who is of hearing is very different to the experience of someone who's deaf and it's great that they explored that in the show showing the two different experiences. In the third episode of Hawkeye called appropriately echoes when Clint and aspiring Avenger Kate meet Maya who at that time is kind of framed as the big villain. They've both been tied up by her henchmen. She spots the hearing aid in Clint's ear and immediately cuts the binding on Clint's hands scolding her henchmen and offended that they would stop a deaf person's communication like that. Of course, once Clint signs to her that he's hard of hearing, not fully deaf, and gives her his cookie, please, baby sign back, she just kind of rolls her eyes and has him tied back up. She then turns away, dismissive of him due to his ignorance. You rely too much on technology, she says through her interpreter. You might find you're better off without it. Clint looks at Kate before answering, yeah, sometimes I think that very same thing. When they subsequently fight and his hearing aid flies off, she crushes it with her boot. And it's hard to tell whether it's to put him at a disadvantage or because she wants him to try embracing his hearing loss rather than fixing it. And that's kind of where I was hoping the show would go. I wanted that. I wanted some, ooh, now he actually has to live a bit more as a, without the hearing aid. But also, I don't want you to be rude about hearing aids and people who wear them as a person who wears hearing aids. Because I also hate when they trash talk hearing aids because they can be useful. Stop me getting run over by lorries. The scene shows how much of an in-between world hard of hearing and those who are deafened later in life live in, caught between hearing and non-hearing people and just kind of not fitting into either group necessarily. Not everyone feels this way, obviously, but it's a very common occurrence. Much like that earlier great comic book issue I was telling you about, the third episode of the show then shows from Clint's perspective, as he can hear very little, and the muffled sound he can hear are used to great effect. When he and Kate are caught in a car chase featuring flying arrows, he can't hear what she's saying, but they manage to communicate as he outruns the bad guys and she sends putty-filled arrows their way. But they do say exactly the same thing at the same time, showing that they're on the same page. There are other little scenes that illustrate beautifully everyday life with hearing loss. After Kate's been talking for a while in a diner, it becomes apparent that Clint's just taken out his hearing aid. Listening fatigue. He attempts to reply to her but completely misses what she's actually saying and, and then most beautifully he gets a phone call from his youngest son and doesn't want to worry the boy that he can't hear him so without being asked Kate just grabs a pad and pen helpfully scribbling down what his son is saying so Clint can respond. It's shot in this calm light way it's not sad and moody. In one scene the series shows that living with hearing loss can be difficult it can be annoying but it can also bring out the kindness in those around you and it's just another part of who you are. Plus it definitely won't stop you from being a superhero. In conclusion, I loved seeing a big studio dealing with a kind of sticky topic. How someone feels coming to terms with their hearing loss and developing a disability. I did have a bit of a funny feeling about Clint's very clear distinction between hard of hearing and deaf. Are the writers and Clint taking hard of hearing here to mean a person with hearing loss who was born hearing, regardless of the level of hearing loss? Because Clint very obviously cannot hear without his hearing aids, and with them his hearing isn't perfect either. And is his hearing getting worse? Or are they saying that someone who uses hearing aids and hears a bit of sound must be hard of hearing, rather than someone like Maya, who hears no sound and is deaf? So 
is someone who uses hearing aids therefore not allowed to use the term deaf? Obviously, I'm not going to tell someone how to self-identify, even a fictional character, but I wish that had been developed more in the show. It's fine if that's how Hawkeye chooses to identify, but not everybody watching the show is going to be aware that deafness is actually a spectrum, not an off-on switch. And it would be a shame if some of the kids watching the show then went to tell the deaf child in their class, oh, you're not really deaf because you wear hearing aids. Just a few more scenes kind of expanding on the deaf community, and deaf culture would have helped, but I guess they'll do that in Echo's show. And having said that, it was great to have representation of not just deaf identity, but also hard of hearing identity, which is a separate thing and is really rare to see. Normally on screen, we just get hearing people with perfect ears and token completely profoundly deaf person. So it was great to witness someone struggling with their hearing, not being perfect with day-to-day -day things that they can sometimes manage and sometimes can't or else could do before and now are unable to, like to a phone call. We see an invisible disability and it's not for pity, it's not for laughs, and it definitely isn't a convenient plot point or shoehorned in for diversity. It's a real part of Clint Barton's life. I was sad that his hearing loss wasn't included when the character was originally introduced and there are pros to having it integrated now that he's more established, but meh. You know, it's been a decade since the first Avengers movie. This definitely could have been part of the character's journey that we saw before now, even if this series is the first time we truly delve deeper into it. I'm also relieved to know that Echo will be a continuing character and play a larger part going forwards, even if Clint is now passing the Hawkeye mantle onto Kate, as it seems we got at the end. It would be really, really weird if they made a whole series interweaving hearing loss just as an excuse to then never use that character again. Like, hearing loss. Oh, well, that's why we've put you on the shelf. <laughs> oh, please do not do that. Please don't do that. There's a lot of variance within the experience of hearing loss, but Hawkeye does this really great job, I think, of showing some of the realities from the struggles to the positives, like never having to hear how bad Rogers the musical is. That did not look good. I wish that they'd really further developed Hawkeye becoming more comfortable with his new identity within the show and had a resolution about it within the final episode, but you know, life doesn't come with tidy resolution. What do you think? If you've seen the show, let me know your thoughts down below. If you haven't seen it, definitely try and watch it however you can, even though I have now spoiled the entire thing for you. And thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Remember to click the link in the description for 10% off your first month. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.